So TC uh, touched on this just a little bit, but we're going to talk a little bit about Snapchat tonight, mainly because I want the young people in the room to be aware of the dangers of Snapchat, and I want parents, how many of you parents have ever heard of Snapchat? By a raise of hands. Okay, so I want parents to be very aware of what Snapchat is and, uh, and what your kids are doing when they're using it. So how many of you guys, I want to say 15 and younger, are using Snapchat or have Snapchat on your cell phone? Raise your hands. Okay, people not want to admit it. <laughs> we, uh, we're getting a lot of cases related to Snapchat. And it's like anything else online. I'm not saying that computers are bad. I'm not saying cell phones are bad. These um, social networking sites, Facebook, MySpace, uh, Twitter, Instagram, they're all great. I use them. But you have to be very careful when you're using them. You have to be aware that I go online every day as a 14-year-old boy and girl. Now, obviously, I am not a 14-year-old boy or girl. But online, I can be anything I want. And I have bad guys who meet me on a weekly basis thinking that I am a child. Okay, so if I can fool the bad guy, think of how many bad guys can fool you. Because I can get a picture off of Google Images or off somebody else's profile, and I can say that's me all day long. Does it mean that it's what I look like? No. If I say that I am 14 year old, year old online, am I breaking the law by saying that I'm 14 when I am really 39? No. It is not against the law to lie online. So understand that since it's not against the law to lie, then a lot of people are not who they appear to be when they are online. So, um, so just be aware of that and that if somebody is a friend of yours, I know Facebook calls them friends and MySpace calls them friends, but they are not really friends if you don't know exactly who they are. If you haven't seen them before in school, if they're not somebody who your parents know their parents, those are your friends because you know exactly who they are and you know what they tell you is true. Someone who tried to befriend you on Facebook and you thought their picture looked cute and you said okay, well, that's not a friend, not a real friend. So Snapchat is this great app that you can put on your smartphone and it's basically a way that you can take a picture, you can maybe add a little text to it if you want to, and then you can send it to whoever you want. You determine how long they get to see it, and then it disappears forever. How do we feel about that? Do you think it disappears forever? No. no. Nothing on the computer disappears forever. Nothing. When you delete something on your computer and on your phone, it is not deleted. Sometimes when you wipe a computer or a cell phone, it is not deleted. So when, it, when something, especially a, a cell phone app, and they're like, ah, use this because after 10 seconds it will disappear and nobody will have any record of that picture. That is false. Okay? They're giving you a false sense of security so you'll actually use their application. So the, uh, the whole premise of Snapchat is that it makes it fast, fun, and private. And uh, just to throw out a statistic, mainly for the uh, older people in the room, such as myself, about 13% of 13 to 18-year-olds are who are using this. Um, so it's, it's really the very, very young folks, the folks who are maybe thinking that since this uh, image disappears, that if they send an image that was probably not something they should be sending, um, maybe a sexting image, something like that, well, it's going to disappear and nobody will even know that I sent it. And that is not the case. And then, uh, and of course, the issue is, just like anything else, that uh, your privacy is never guaranteed online. They can't say that anything's going to disappear, that someone's not going to be able to copy it, send it off to the Internet, trade it with other people. They can't guarantee that. And Snapchat, I, I guarantee you, they are not going to uh, say something like, if, if this uh, actually happens, we'll give you a million dollars or something like that because they know that it's possible for it to happen. It's extremely easy on Snapchat to get a very false sense that this image is uh, disappearing when it truly is not. So please keep that in mind when you're taking these pictures, 
especially the kind of pictures that are being brought to my attention at work. If I have a young person sitting in front of me and they are completely upset because the entire school has seen this picture, they had no idea that they would get a hold of it, I cannot do anything to make that picture disappear. I do not control the internet. Even though I am a police officer in the state of Georgia, I do not have control over what is and is not on the internet. I can't make it go away. Now, I can go lock up a bad guy if he's trying to do something bad to a kid, but that picture is there forever. That means when you are long gone, that picture is still being traded around in the internet world. And, uh, and also to touch on something else that TC mentioned, the, uh, the GBI has been doing internet searches on all applicants, on all intern applications for years. I mean, for at least five years, I've been doing them. Um, as part of background investigations for GBI employees and for college students who want to do an internship with us. But UGA does them, Georgia Tech, it's, it is the, it's the world that we live in. We want to know what your online personality is before we take you on and put, put the GBI badge on you or um, assume the liability of what you do in your private life, especially online. So please keep that in mind. So uh, when you're on these websites, uh, I will echo what TC was saying. Please be very, very careful about the kind of people you, uh, you friend. Because I'm friends with all kinds of people. And, uh, and I do that so I can keep an eye on what they're doing. Whether that's my friends' kids, or whether that's people who are trying to get a job with UBI, or if that's the adults that I'm trying to uh, chit-chat online and see if they're interested in meeting up with a kid. So for all you know, I could be one of your friends online and uh, may come and see you. You can get anything on the internet and anything to be had. But back in Grandma's day, you had party line telephones because you had to dial, in fact, you had to pick up the phone and I had to see, say Cedar 649 because Cedar 670 was right next door and people could hear everybody else's conversations. You had local newspaper and magazines to get your information and you had face-to-face -face communication. Face-to-face -face communication. Now, how about that? That's something different. But this isn't Grandma's world. This is definitely not Grandma's world. There's people out there looking for you all the time. It's the big, bad world out there. And you should never let some of that stuff inside your door. In fact, you would never let some of this junk inside your door. But nevertheless, you bring it in to your computer. And sometimes you do it unawares. Now, the classroom of today looks more like this than it did before. At one time, everybody had books. How many kids used to have a book bag that had about 100 pounds of stuff in it? And yet, yeah, okay. Anymore, you're taking a tablet because they're presenting you with tablets now in a lot of the school systems. And that is all of your books. It's all there. All of your homework is done. You do your homework and you push it on online. It's all graded online. Everything is done by the tablet. The problem with it is, is that while you're here, it is closely monitored. At the school, you have somebody who watches all this. You have a paid staff to actually make sure that you're not doing anything inappropriate or nothing inappropriate is happening to you. Here's the problem. You take the tablets home. You take the tablets home, and what happens is, is that now the big bad world is available to you. Now, as parents, what do you do? You just say no and pull the plug? Yeah, like that's going to happen. But a lot of times, we're like this guy over here. We just stick our head in the sand. We don't think that, we, well, we trust our kids, and, you know, and I trust my child, and you trust your child, but you know what? There's a lot of times there's things that are out there that are just very, very tempting. Or else you could just do like the lady in the middle and guard the child for, for everything they do. You can either overact or underact. And so what you have to realize, though, is that the threats truly are real. There is a lot of things that are out there. There's the Facebooking things that go on. You have people who stalk people. They're, your, they're not your friends. They're fiends. That's the way you write. That's what they truly are. There's people who are wanting to get your identity. And there's people there who really want to steal your money. And, they, and, it's, and it's all done by way of these, um, these devices. The challenge is to create a safe home. And, and it creates some way to make sure that the tablets are used exactly for what they're intended for, schoolwork. And how we're going to do that, I'm going to give you a very short tutorial. Don't try to take notes because it's going to, I'm just going to go real fast. 
But if you really want this, you can either email me and I will send this presentation to you and you can actually take your time and find out how to do this. Or you can ask Sharon and I believe they're going to put it on the Newton County website, I believe. So, here is the tutorial. First thing you got to realize is that there's hardware out there and this is a very simplistic diagram. You have the internet, that information comes into a modem which takes all the zeros and ones and makes it into something that the computers can hear, understand. It goes to a router and a router then assigns uh, addresses to all the different computers out there. And you can tell it's a real old slide because look how old that computer is. Nobody's got one of those. But the terminology is this. There are certain things called IP addresses. And that's a unique number that only a computer can have at one time. It's not like the party lines of the day. You can't share that. And there's also a thing called a MAC address, a media access control. And again, it's, it's something unique to the computers. You really don't need to know that. You don't need to know how it works. What? But what we're going to try to show you how to do with it is, is how to stop the tablets from getting out to the world while they can still use their tablets at home on your interior network. And so, step number one, you find the CMD command. How many people know what I'm talking about, the CMD command? Sure, some of you do. Okay, with your Windows 7, you find the CMD command by hitting the start button, type in CMD, and then you go. Windows 8, you just... Go to the, your Metro screen, type CMD, that comes up, you click over there, you type in CMD, and you click over there. Okay, step number two, you need to find the, uh, you need to type this in. After you do that, ipconfig slash ALL, and there's a space between the slash, and that's what you type right there. And when you type that and hit enter, it takes you to a page that looks like this. You get a page look like this, there's three things you're going to look for. You're going to look for the IP address, the MAC address, and the gateway address. Once you get those three, you write them down, and that's all you need to know how to lock those routers down. And it's not difficult to do. Physical address is the MAC address, and then there's your gateway, and then we move on. And now if you, have a, if you have a MAC, you can do the same thing to this. It's just a different interface. But I'm moving on. I'm going to use PC as my example tonight. When you do, you go to your web browser. And at the top there, you type in HTTP colon slash slash and then the, the gateway address that you just wrote down. You type in enter, hit enter, and it'll take you to a page like this because that is actually where your router is. Your router resides on the gateway. That is your gateway to the outside world. Once you get here, you need to put in a username and password. And you say, I don't know how to do that. Most of the time, they haven't been touched. They're, they're the company default. That's dealings default. Hit login and you're there. That once you're there, you get into the router and what you have to do with it is, is just put the MAC address and there's a place on the advanced tab in there. You'll see it when you get inside. You click on the advanced tab, there's a place where you can actually put the MAC address in there and there's a little thing that says either allow or deny this, this device to get to the internet. And as soon as you deny it, your kids can try anything they want to, but you see the MAC address is on that tablet. There's no way you can get around it. That device itself is completely locked out. Sometimes what you can do with it is, is that on the advanced tab there's a place where you can schedule it. Where you can say, our kids can use the internet between 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. And after that they're locked out. And you can do it according to date, you can do it to time, or you can do it according to MAC address.